Welcome to the deep dive. Today we're really getting into something fascinating. Comfy UI. It's uh, this open source program that's seriously shaken up how people, especially power users, approach AI image generation. Yeah, our goal here is to sort of figure out why. Why is this node-based system becoming the go-to for really complex, modular AI stuff? We'll look at its history and maybe most importantly, the big security risks tied to all that flexibility. It's such an interesting tool because well, CompUI is essentially the ultimate workbench. It's open source, it's graphical, but it's also an API and a backend. And it supports the big diffusion models, you know, stable diffusion flux on your one DIT. But the key thing is, instead of hiding how it works, it lays everything bare, every single step, mm -hmm. loading models, picking samplers, even tweaking control net details. It's all there as these little boxes, nodes that you connect together. Okay, nodes. Let's unpack that a bit. For you listening, imagine you're building your image generation process visually, like uh, using flowcharts or something. Mm -hmm. Each node is one specific job, load this model, use this text prompt, apply this effect, and you literally draw wires between them to create this, this control flow graph. They call it a workflow. It looks complicated maybe, but it gives you this incredible level of control. Exactly. And that visual complexity, it leads to a huge technical plus. These workflows, technically, they're directed acyclic graphs. Okay, well, technical term, yeah. directed acyclic graph. Ah, uh, yeah, it just means the process flows forward. Like water in a pipe, it doesn't loop back on itself. And that structure is um, really crucial because it allows for something called partial execution. Partial execution. Why is that a big deal for someone just wanting to make an image? Because it can save you, I mean, potentially most of your processing time. Let's say you have a workflow that takes a minute to run. If you only change one tiny thing, maybe just the seed number for randomness, ComfyUI is smart enough to only rerun the parts, the nodes affected by that change. Whereas, you know, other UIs might have to start the whole thing over from scratch. So for tweaking, for research, for complex pipelines, it's just dramatically faster. Right. That makes sense. Huge efficiency gain. And the scale we're talking about. As of late 2024, something like, what, over 1,600 nodes supported? Yeah, the ecosystem is massive. And what's also really clever is how you share these things. The entire workflow, like the exact nodes, the connections, the settings, it's often saved as uh, just text JSON data right inside the image file itself like the PNG or JPEG. Wow. So you just share the image and someone else can load your exact setup. Exactly. Make sharing complex techniques incredibly easy. Okay, so let's talk user experience then. You compare Comfy UI to maybe simpler tools like Automatic 11 is a popular one. Comfy UI definitely looks more complicated. Is that complexity just overkill for a lot of users? Well, it depends what you want to do, right? If Automat 1111 is like a simple point and shoot camera, Comfy UI is more like a professional photographer's entire studio kit. It is more complex, but that complexity unlocks things you just can't easily do otherwise, like uh, multi-step conditioning. That lets you apply different parts of your prompt, say the main subject versus the background style, with different levels of influence. You get really fine-grained control. Uh, okay, so controlling different concepts within the prompt separately. Precisely. And then there's stuff like advanced in-painting, really seamless video and animation workflows, and Amadeep is a big one there, and... Crucially, batch processing and automation that really leverages that partial execution speed we talked about. And this all came about pretty fast, right? Comfy UI was released, what, early 2023? By someone known as Comfy Anonymous? Yeah, the goal was explicitly to create a better interface, more flexible than what was out there. Mm. And its modularity is really why it took off so quickly in the uh, more advanced user community. Okay, but here's where we need to talk about the flip side. The ecosystem. You mentioned the huge number of nodes. A lot of those come from the community, right? Managed through things like the Comfy UI Manager extension. That's right. Comfy UI Manager makes it super easy to browse and install hundreds of these custom nodes made by other users. It's incredibly convenient. Maximum convenience, which often comes with a catch, doesn't it? It absolutely does. And this isn't just theory. There was a major incident. In June 2024, a hacker group called Null Bulge managed to compromise a pretty popular community extension. It was called Comfy and Vision. Compromise how? What did it do? It was nasty. The malicious code they injected was actively trying to steal cryptocurrency wallets from users. It was also taking screenshots, grabbing system information, IP addresses, basically full-on spyware. Wow, okay, that's serious. Did they say why they did it? Well, the hackers, Noel Bulge, they put out a statement. They claimed their motive was uh, political, sort yeah. of targeting users involved in what they called AI art generation, art theft. 
claiming they were trying to protect artists' rights. Mm. Regardless of their stated motive, the impact was real financial harm and data theft. Absolutely. And it forces you, the user, to ask a tough question. When you're pulling in all these powerful tools from a wide open community ecosystem, how much checking, how much vetting of the source code are you responsible for before you install it? That's a really critical point. You trade ease of use for needing to be much more vigilant about security. Definitely. So, okay, for people listening who might be thinking about trying it despite the risks, how do you actually get it running? Installation is actually pretty straightforward these days. Mm -hmm. For most Windows or Mac OS users, there's a simple desktop installer, easiest way. There's also a portable version that bundles everything, including Python, so it just runs. And for more advanced setups. Right, if you're using less common hardware, maybe AMD GPUs with RSCM or Intel's XPU stuff, you'll likely need the manual install, working directly with the source code. It's more flexible, but needs more technical know-how. Got it. And hardware. What kind of machine do you really need to run this well? Okay, practical advice time. Comfy UI can run on graphics cards with lower VRAM, video memory, because it has memory offloading features, yeah. but uh, be warned, that slows things down a lot. For doing serious work, especially with the big models like SDXL or definitely for video generation, the strong recommendation is a modern NVIDIA GPU. Think 3000 series or newer, ideally with 16 gigabytes of VRAM or even more if you can swing it. Yeah. That power really makes a difference in speed and just stability. Right. Invest in the hardware if you're going deep. Pretty much. So wrapping it up, Comfy UI is, uh, well, it's the tool if you want maximum control, maximum modularity. It really rewards users who want to get under the hood, but that power, that flexibility, it comes bundled with this added responsibility. Mm -hmm. You have to manage these complex chains of nodes, and you absolutely have to be careful about vetting the community tools you bring into your setup. It really highlights a core tension, doesn't it? The amazing creative potential you unlock with this kind of flexible, open source AI generation versus the very real need to stay secure in a world where convenience can sometimes mask risk. Definitely something to think about before you hit that install button. Thank you for joining us for this deep dive.